Hello everyone, and welcome to today's session. We are going to dive into the concept of adjustments or adjusting entries, an important concept in financial accounting, as well all of your accounting courses, intermediate, governmental, audit, advanced accounting. You need to understand adjustments, and you're gonna be introduced to it in financial accounting. In this session, we are going to explain why do you need adjustments, the theoretical background. To understand adjustments, you have to understand something we call the periodicity principle. You have to understand the going concern assumptions. You also have to know what is interim financial reporting. And most importantly, you have to have a good understanding or a simple understanding, let's put it simple understanding, between the cash accounting and the accrual accounting. So what we are going to do first is set the ground why adjustments? Why do we need adjustments? Why are they needed? What's the purpose behind them? We will introduce the four types of adjustments in this session, in which we will set the stage for the future sessions. We will work a multiple choice question to kind of solidify or test our knowledge after we are done. An important topic. All what we're doing now is setting the ground. Why do we need adjustments? Because if you understand why, once we start to prepare the adjustments, it will be easier for you because you're gonna put each adjustment within its context, its umbrella. What's the purpose of the adjustments? Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start our discussion by discussing the accounting period concept and the going concern assumption as a background for why do we need adjustments. Starting with the accounting period concept or the periodicity concept. This concept basically states the life of a company should, could, should be or could be broken down by yearly, semi-annually, quarterly, one, two, three, four, or even monthly. So we can break down the company into artificial time period, usually monthly or quarterly. Even small businesses will have to prepare their taxes once a year. They'll have to break down the life of the company annually. So even for a small business, every year they have to kind of stop, close their books, and we're going to see what that means later and start again. Now, larger companies, they may need to prepare their financial statements semi-annually, for publicly traded companies, they prepare their financial statements quarterly. Monthly financial reporting is common for small businesses. For example, where I used to work, we had many MDs, medical doctors, and our partners convinced them that they need financial statements on a monthly basis, which is good because the doctors don't have time to review their financial statements so a monthly report will be helpful for them and this is to keep the owners of the business and the creditors informed so the first thing we need to understand is there is this accounting period concept where at some point in time that point in time could be monthly could be quarterly could be at least yearly where you have to stop close the books and prepare your financial statement basically put a period at the end of the sentence, then start again a new sentence. The going concern assumption, and we learn about this assumption, assumes that the company exists in perpetuity. What does that mean? It means when you have a company, the company is not going to end this year. The company is not going to end next year. The company it lives in perpetuity. We assume, we assume that because if we assume the company's life is ending this year then the way we account for things is differently than if we assume we're gonna be in life for perpetuity because we assume we're gonna be in life therefore we have to take the assets and the liabilities and spread those assets and liabilities over the life 
of the asset, the life of the liability, the life of whatever we are planning to do because the company will be in existence. So giving this information, we're going to be in business forever and we're going to break the life of the business into artificial period. Why do we need adjustments? Well, adjustments are necessary. So what are adjustments first? Adjustments, think of adjustments as updates. You cannot think of Think of them as corrections because correction me means you made an error. But adjustments means you need to adjust. You need to update your figures. So adjustments are necessary to adhere to the accounting period concept and going concern assumption. Because at some point we have to stop. We have to stop and prepare the financial statements. We want to make sure when we stop all numbers are up to date all the numbers are adjusted are up to date and that's why we prepare adjustments so we have to stop and adjust update certain figures to match that period now the time frame that we have to prepare those adjustments could be annual could be semi-annually could be quarterly could be monthly could be weekly depending on how often do we do we want the financial statements depending on the company needs an obligation whenever we need it we have to prepare the financial statements and when we, when we prepare the financial statements certain accounts need to be adjusted or updated because once we stop we assume that's the end of this period we want to make sure all the figures are up to date when we publish when we start the financial statements now we have a term we need to be familiar with and that's called interim financial reporting what is interim interim financial reporting is any period that is not a full year is considered interim financial reporting so if we report for one month that's interim financial reporting if we report quarterly that's interim if we report semi-annually that's interim so companies might report monthly quarterly or some semi-annually depending on their operational needs and regulatory requirements. The reason I say regulatory requirements, because if you are a publicly traded company, and, and I mentioned this earlier, by regulation, they have to report their financial statements on a quarterly basis. They are required, regulatory requirements, they are required to do so. Now, when we report yearly, yearly is different than in term, interim financial reporting is anything other than a year we have a calendar year and we have physical year what's the difference between the two well calendar year is january 1st 1 1 x1 till 12 31 x1 so from january 1st till december 31st it's the calendar year that we are familiar with companies they can choose any 365 days other than the calendar year they can start February 1st February 1st and end the year in January that's fine that's a physical year something other than a calendar year so we have interim financial reporting that's less than a year anything less than a year is called interim for a year we could have a calendar year or a company could have a physical year. Now, why, why would the company have a physical year rather than a calendar year? For some companies, they are very busy December 31st. A case in point or a prime example are retailers. Retailers, they are very busy during the holiday season, December and early January. Therefore, they don't have time to focus on preparing financial reporting. What they want to do during that time is operate the business. They're selling inventory. They don't want to count inventory when they're selling inventory. Therefore, what they do, they will start their year February 1st. That's acceptable. That's fine. Another concept we need to learn about is cash versus accrual basis. Now, we kind of touched upon this topic in prior recording when we talked about the revenue, revenue recognition principle and the expense recognition principle. But let's take a look at it from a cash basis versus accrual basis. What is cash basis and what is accrual basis? Let's start with cash basis. Cash basis and accrual basis, basically, they determine when do we recognize revenue. So under the cash basis, and that's easy, cash, cash, we are all familiar with cash. Revenue is recognized. What is recognized? It means re 
recorded. Revenue is recorded when cash is received. That's easy. If I have the cash in my hand, it's revenue. If I don't have the cash, it's not revenue. And expenses are recorded when cash is paid. And when do I recognize expenses? When I pay the cash. That's the cash basis of accounting. It's easy. It's a straightforward. But it does not provide an accurate financial picture. Why not? Because companies, especially in the real world, we do a lot of work on credit. On credit means we do the work and the customer pays us later. Also, when we purchase items, when we purchase, when we purchase goods and services, we buy something, then we pay later. So if we assume the cash basis, if we are using the cash basis, there are many transactions that goes uncaptured until the other period, until the next period, which is not an accurate financial figure versus accrual basis. Under the accrual basis of accounting, accrual is the gap basis, is the generally accepted accounting principle. And this is what you need to learn. You need to learn this one, accrual basis. Revenue is recognized when earned. Huh? We heard about this. This is the revenue recognition principle. And expenses when incurred. This is the expense recognition principle or the matching principle. It means we recognize revenue when? When we do the work. And we talked about this in the prior session. If we do the work, we have revenue. If we incur the expense, we have an expense. And this method provides a more accurate financial picture by matching revenue with related expenses. So what happened is this. It does not matter whether you receive the money or not. As long as you did the work, you have revenue. And it doesn't matter whether you paid the expense or not. If the expense helped generate revenue, it's an expense. You might pay it later, but, in, but it's an expense now. Let's take a look at an example. And we're going to work many examples, but just to kind of illustrate the point, a cash versus accrual basis. Let's assume a company that paid 2400 for a 24-month insurance policy starting December 1st, year one. So here's a, here's a calendar for you. This is year X1, and the company paid December 1st of year one. And this is a 24-month policy. Therefore, the policy covers all of year two and 11 month of year three. So the com this policy covers the month of December X1, all of X2, and 11 month and X3. And this is 24 month. If we are using the cash basis of accounting, how do we account for this transaction? Well, under the cash basis, since we paid, since we paid 2,400, since we paid 2,400 December 1st, X1, all the expense took place December 1st, X1. So under the cash basis, what do we do? We expense, we record the expense 2,400 December 1st, X1. Well, how about if we are using the accrual basis of accounting? Well, if we are using the accrual basis, what we say is this. We say this policy serves us all of December X1, all of X2, and 11 months of X3. What do we have to do? Under the accrual basis, since this policy, this 2,400, is spread over 24 months, it's helping generate revenue, serving the company over 24 months, this means we expense $100 per month for the next 24 month. What does that mean? It means we spread out the 2,400 over 24 month. It means only $100 is expensed in year one. Then 1,200 is expensed in year two and 1,100 is expensed in year three. It means we're gonna take the 2,400 and spread it out 100 in year one for the month of December, 12 month for year X2 and 11 month for year X3 in total 2,400, but this 2,400 is spread out. Now, when, what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm the, what I'm looking at here is adjustments. I, I'm making adjustments and we're gonna see that later. This is called the prepaid adjustment. Matter of fact, we have to learn about four types of adjustments, four types. And the first one is called deferral of expense or prepaid expense. And what is a prepaid expense? 
well cost paid and advanced but not yet incurred what I just did this prepaid insurance is an example of a prepaid expense I prepaid the cost but the cost was not incurred yet when is the cost incurred the cost will be incurred over 24 months and we're gonna have a whole session about prepaid expenses or the fur deferral of expenses we also have deferral of revenues or, or, or are also called unearned revenues this is when payment received before services are performed well under this scenario you get the money first you'll get the money first then you recognize the revenue later this is unearned revenue first you get the money then the revenue is recorded later the revenue is later and we'll have a one whole session about deferral of revenue for deferral of expenses we're gonna have two recordings and you're gonna see why later then we're gonna have the third type of adjustments and those are accrued expenses what are accrued expenses don't worry about them I'm gonna tell you what they are now we're gonna have a whole session about them expenses incurred so they did happen but we did not pay for them yet and we have you guessed it accrued revenues what are accrued revenues revenues earned but not yet received received in cash so we did the work but we did not receive the cash so those are the four adjustments that we need to be working with and we're gonna have two recording about deferral of expenses one about deferral of revenue one accrued expense one accrued revenue and obviously I will have a comprehensive example so these adjustments making sure that revenues and expenses are recorded in the correct period and are recorded for the proper amount providing a true picture now bear in mind as we adjust revenues and expenses we are going to be adjusting balance sheet accounts so we're gonna learn later that every adjustment affect an income statement account which is a revenue and expense and a balance sheet account so every adjustment will have an income statement account adjustment revenue and expense and the balance sheet and a balance sheet are what an asset liability so it's going to affect one income statement and one asset or liability one income statement one asset or liability so it's either revenue plus asset or revenue plus liability expense plus asset or expense plus liability don't worry we're going to work all these adjustments later on now let me give you an overall picture and I'm going to start the next recording with that the process of preparing adjustments involve three steps first we identify what's the current balance for a particular account what's the current balance well what's the current balance then we ask ourselves what the balance should be so let's assume we have an account and the balance is a hundred and the balance should be 100 so if the balance 100 and it should be 100 no adjustment is necessary then if we determine a balance is 100 and it should be 80 then we have to do what adjust the difference between the current and the correct balance so we have to reduce our balance by 20 or it's 100 and it should be 130 then we have to increase the balance by 30 so first we determine what's the current balance and we ask ourselves and we're gonna work specific examples is this the correct balance is this what the balance should be if the answer is yes there's no adjustment if the answer is no what should the balance be and compute the difference and make the adjustment this is the overall picture and this is what I will start with next session but let's take a look at a multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com to make sure we understand the basics of adjustments preparing financial statements on the basis that revenue are recognized when generated and expenses when incurred is referred to as what so the question is when we recognize revenue as earned and expenses as incurred is this the cash basis accrual basis perpetual basis or periodic system per per perpetual system or periodic system well I hope I hope you know it's not perpetual and periodic those are inventory system we would learn about later is this the cash basis or the accrual basis well I hope you know the cash basis revenue are recognized when cash received well is this the definition for this no this is when cash this is recognized revenue is recognized when generated it means when we earned it 
That's the accrual basis and expenses when incurred. That's the accrual basis. So knowing the revenue recognition principle and the expense recognition principle are important because basically adjustments are based on that. Recognize revenue when earned, recognize expenses when incurred. And that's why we have to stop and ask ourselves, do we have any revenues and expenses that we need to make adjustments for? And this is basically accrual base, under the accrual basis of accounting. Under the cash basis, there is no need for adjustments. The only reason we change the record is when we receive the cash. If we have the cash, we have revenue. If we pay the cash, we have an expense. Under the accrual basis, we have revenue. When we work for the revenue, when we complete the work, we have an expense when we incur this expense. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional multiple choice questions. That's going to help you as a financial accounting student to consolidate, to understand these concepts. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.